I'm Flora Rees and I'm Head of Programming at the Emirates Literature Foundation. While we've all been under lockdown, I've found that reading has really helped um, keep me happy and find ways of looking at the world outside. And I wanted to share with you one of the books that I've particularly loved. This is Bridge of Clay by Marcus Zusak. This is a novel that uh, was really anticipated by readers across the world because Marcus is the best-selling and beloved author of The Book Thief and it took 13 years for him to write the new book and get it out into the world. It's a book about brothers, about love and redemption, hope and tragedy, and this is how it's described by the publishers. The five Dunbar brothers are living, fighting, dreaming, loving in the perfect squalor of a house without grown-ups. Today, the father who abandoned them is about to walk back in. But why has he returned, and who have the boys become since he left? At the helm is Matthew, cynical, poetic, Rory, forever truanting, Henry, the money spiller, and young Tommy, the pet collector, who has colonised the house with dysfunctional pets, including Achilles the mule. And then there's Clay, the quiet one, his whole young life haunted by an unspeakable act. From the tale of their grandfather, whose passion for the ancient Greeks still colours their lives, to the mother and father who met and married over a mislaid piano, to the present day, Bridge of Clay is an epic portrait of a ramshackle family and the unburying of one boy's tragic secret. So it's the story particularly of these five boys living together, fighting, um, looking after each other in a very offhand sort of way with a lot of love at the background and what their past and future is going to be. The story starts as, as this says, the murderer, as he's called, walks back into the house and asks the boys if one of them will help him build a bridge. From there, the story moves forwards and backwards. The way Marcus writes is to show you cycles of story, cycles of narrative. So you have to plunge straight in and just go with the story because until you get to the end, you won't always understand the beginning. I love this way of writing a book. I found it's got some depth and real beauty and haunting lyricism in the, in the narrative. And I found that although I didn't really understand what was happening at the beginning, I just had to let Marcus tell the story and find out where these boys were going. So it's the story of three generations of the family from the boy's mother and her, and her father, and she was an immigrant who found her own way into Australia, the story of their father and how he and their mother met, and then in particular the story of these boys centred around Clay. And Clay is the moral touchstone of the family. He's the one that all the boys find, knows their stories, knows their secrets, knows where they need to go and how they need to save themselves as a family. I listened to the audiobook rather than read the book in this case, and I found it particularly good. Firstly, because um, Marcus reads the book himself, and it means that you really feel that you're getting the author's understanding and nuance of every line, and it is a beautifully written book. And secondly, because as I said, it's a very co complex and quite dense book, and listening is a really we good way to just let yourself go with it. Um, find out where the story is leading and let it take you there.